about backlog refinement. So when it comes to backlog refinement, there is not like one structural way to do it. Uh, if we look at the uh, the Scrum Guide, the Scrum Guide is not like, don't have like so specific and described like uh, the time box, who attend backlog refinement, and also how often should you have it and all of that. Uh, the Scrum Guide just summarized that we should allocate 10% of our time into doing our backlog refinement. On today's session, we're going to discuss like uh, backlog refinement. What is it? Why do we have it? and how we're gonna facilitate backlog refinements and the role of the Scrum Master in backlog refinements. Welcome back to Aisha Scrum. I'm very happy to have you join my platform for my existing subscriber and my new subscriber. I welcome you all. Kindly subscribe to my channel if you've been finding this valuable. Actually, it should truly, truly will mean a lot to me. I appreciate you all. Thank you. So now uh, we are in Jira, right? Uh, I know I already had a video in the past about anti-patterns for backlog refinement. I even forgot what I said in that video, but <laughs> if you've not watched that video yet, anti-patterns for backlog refinement, if you watch that, I think it can help you so much about this uh, meeting. Uh, I said meeting. It's a help you so about this video. So when it comes to backlog refinement, so to be honest, for my experience, for the most part, right, for the most part, the product owner will facilitate this meeting. Right. I've also seen to um some places I've worked where the scrum master will be uh the one to facilitate it. Uh I've also seen in a part where the development team themselves they drive the whole meeting, which is nothing wrong with any of that, right? Sometimes what determines who facilitated and what uh um, sometimes determined by the maturity of the team and how new is the company to agile or the project itself that they are working on, right? Because this is one meeting that, to be honest, I'm always very flexible with the attendees, like who attends it. I always want to focus on, do I have the right people for the right future that I'll be working with? And if so, who else can I bring to help ensure that this meeting will be such valuable coming out of this? Because if your team can have a good, effective backlog refinement meeting, it always, always will help your sprint planning meeting. And it makes everything so simpler. And when you go to that sprint planning meeting, it's basically you're just verifying and studying for the most part. So that's why backlog refinement is very important. And if you also have a team that currently they're not doing backlog refinements, and you try to like uh, get a buy-in from the team, uh, it's always good not to force it in the beginning, right? Let just observe the way how they work in the sprints. And if you notice that, they will come back in retrospective and they will say, oh, our requirements was not clear, uh, some acceptance criteria was missing, or we uh, we thought that the PO constantly was coming with these different changes and there's no alignment with our PO and ourselves, the business and the technical. So if all this thing is coming out of the feedback from retro, then it's been now good, okay, where's how we can solve this? Maybe let's schedule another, another hour meeting prior to planning, right? My first backlog refinement actually helped uh, implement it for a team. I did not call it backlog refinement, even though I know in my head it was backlog refinement, but the team would just call it like a working session. Because to be honest, backlog refinement is working session. So just be flexible as a scrum master, the way how sometimes you name these meetings, especially in the beginning phase uh, where team members are pushing back from all of this. Uh, try to get them to fail, right? But sometimes if they fail, they will learn from that and they will be willing to want to hear different options on how they can improve. And that's where I've always used the opportunity to now introduce us doing an hour session where we can go over all of this. Because to be honest, if we do all of this prior to planning, we definitely can help ensure that we have an effective sprint planning. And nine out of 10, they'll always will jump in and we'll do it. And as we continue planning, doing the working session, I'll just say I'll change the name to refinement, right? At the end of the day, the agenda will remain the same, which is to look at the product backlog, look at our current state in the sprint and ways how we can improve. I've also seen like some team where the product owner would take ownership of the meeting invite. But let me be honest with you all. Uh, to be honest, I've worked with some product owner in the past that have very wonderful product owner, nothing wrong with them. Very, very good for the most part. 90% of the product owners I've worked with, uh, they are very, very proactive, right? I would say in my experience, I've had like one product owner that, hmm, 
I let them in the beginning. They were like, oh, Aisha, I want to facilitate backlog refinement. Uh, I want to take ownership of the meeting invites. I want to be the one to send the invite. I want to be the one doing everything. I'm like, yeah, sure, go ahead. That's fine. You could go ahead and do that. And I will, I left everything with this product owner, by the way. Now I'm telling you all the story. I know like I have a lot of stories. <laughs> So I left it with this uh, product owner, and guess what? This product owner will cancel the backlog refinement without communicating with me. Oh my God, that's like my biggest pet peeve. Canceling meeting without talking about it or even saying the reason why you're canceling it, at least ask me, bro. So I have to sit up with one on one with this PO, to be honest, right? So with this PO, I was like, okay, I've noticed that for the past two backlog refinements, you will cancel it and then you will say that there is nothing to be refined. I was like, but if I looked at the backlog, it's actually empty. We still can put stuff in there. And also stuff from our review was not added. So what can we better do in the future, right? They're like, oh, Aisha, I, I'm ownership of this meeting. I'm the one taking this. I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm not saying you shouldn't. So... I was like, I think it's important the next time you want to cancel this meeting, just talk to me. Let me know. I can step in, actually. I can help facilitate this meeting if you are not available. And vice versa, if I'm not available, you can also help facilitate it. But I think we still should connect and meet and discuss, even with our current state in the spring, right? If there's anything, there's always going to be something for us to discuss with the development team or what we can do next or what can we improve better or look at the overall like work stream, right? And then, oh, yeah, sure. And I was, okay, I think go, uh, the next thing I was like, okay. Um, then the next meeting, then of course, after that session, they, they were held the meeting and we realized that we were so late. And then she, she realized that she has to go back and create a lot more stories. And because in our company that time, the POs are the ones responsible to create stories, right? And then she had to go do that. And we come back again and go to planning. And to be honest, the PO went back again and canceled the meeting. So what I did was tell the PO, I think it's best for me to take ownership of this meeting. As I see you are very busy, you have a lot more other things you're doing. I'll take ownership of this meeting and we'll collaborate with the team. Days that you're not available, we can discuss anything that come out of this meeting that for you, we will def I will definitely sync up with you one-to-one -one and follow up with you on those. So I had to take over the ownership. <laughs> I have to talk about the ownership because to be honest, this person was just canceling the meeting, canceling the meeting. Even the developers too was already so discouraged. So the reason why I'm giving all of this story is that sometimes you will hear people will be like, oh, it's not the Scrum Master responsibility to take notes. It's not the Scrum Master responsibility to ensure this meeting is here. Scrum Masters are not supposed to attend these meetings, blah, 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 blah. To be honest, I know the Scrum guy said something, but always, always when you go to a company, Face your own company. Look at the challenges your, your your teams are going through and find ways how you can help better support them. If they're having challenges in running their meetings, you might have to step in and run those meetings for the meantime until you are able to show them until they get to that state where they can run their meetings. If you have a PO that will constantly cancel a backlog refinement, take ownership of that backlog refinement and play the role. And later on, as you are coaching your PO on this side, right? If you have a backlog refinement that... The team members do not attend, right? You see, they're like the team members are not attending. Guess what? Try to find a way how we can get those people. Maybe I even have to do some mini, mini working session at outside and discuss with the team, right? So there is no one structural way to do backlog refinement. It's just something that works so well for your team. The main goal is at the end of this session, at least we should have an idea what we want to work on next. But before we go further, if this content is valuable to you and my other videos, like and subscribe to this channel. I really appreciate it. And if you're interested in mentorship, do not hesitate to email me at admin at aishascrumtech.com. All right. So it's very important for me to make this statement and say that if you have your backlog refinement, let's say once a week, right? Or you have it two times a week. I know sometimes teams spend so much time to do all of these things and get the backlog to be ready. But it's very important for you team, for you Scrum Master to coach your team and let them know that even though we are planning this a week before the next sprint starts, we should also know that 
things might change, right? Teams might change because the PO is constantly syncing up with stakeholders and the end user in some case, right? So as more things are learned, we might have to readjust that meetings that we've been planning for the past a week or two, right? Because the reason why I'm saying because I've seen also in a place whereby uh, Scrum Master will be so upset or sometimes they'll, they'll flip when a team member, when a PO will come in and start saying, oh, all we plan for in that backlog refinement is now changing. We have to start over again. Don't be that scrum master where you start making all these statements that you discourage the whole team. At the end of the day, sometimes we should always know that things might change. So backlog refinement is not like uh, a way that, oh, let's say, for example, now I'm in Spring 27, right? And we plan to work for Spring 28. And let's say I plan to work for Spring 28, and now I'm saying that, since we've already planned work and put everything to Spring 28, then nothing should change. Everything can, to be honest. Even though we're in backlog refinements, pulling story from the product backlog here to the potential next sprint backlog, even though we can do this just to help ensure that we narrow down our priority and have more transparency on what we should work on next. And the PO, sometimes we will do this prior to the meeting, right? Have all of this here. Until this date is closer to the, until the sprint starts, we should have the mindset that things can continue to change, right? And also we coach our team to also have that mindset and thinking. Because if we do that, it's going to be for our own good. If not, a team will be like, oh, we planned that last week. We are not going back to those. No, we can't be that, right? I've seen this thing in the past. People like, oh, we've planned that already. We don't have to go back. Sometimes two people that are working safe, They'll be like, oh, we've done that in PI planning. We don't have to go back. No, that's not true. You still should go back until you start that sprint, right? But it's good for us to at least to have a high, ready, prioritized stories so that we're not going to planning, start scrambling and wondering what we're going to be working on next. That's the importance of backlog refinement, right? So the question is now, what is the first thing we'll do in backlog refinement, right? Just like what we do in sprint planning, we look at the availability, we talk about the stakeholders. We talk about the uh, holidays, people taking PTO. We choose to start bringing all those up, standing in backlog refinements, right? We have all those things too. We are asking the team, we are bringing up. And sometimes too, you work with a team that they will have a, a, a another backlog that's called high priority. I've also worked with a team in the past who have a backlog for stories that are refined. Uh, and it's easy to just create here. Like if you want to do that too for your own team, you just create here. And in this case, you just rename this to, uh, not add this, I want to change the title, where you just call this uh, future sprint. Sometimes they call this future sprint. Or sometimes they might call it like um, refined backlog. So they might call it anything, right? They might call it anything that they want, but it's, it's, they might have everything like from the product backlog that's highest, where after being discussed and refined, they might just put it there and pack it. So when they go to sprint planning, they are not looking at the product backlog. They will only look at here. There's nothing wrong with that. So depending on what, uh, what the team want to do or what the product owner, if they're the one driving it, what they want to do or what everyone agrees on, right? But the most important thing is that you should have either you have a space, you want to have this refined story if they want to do it per already existed sprint that was created, you know, or if the product owner just prefer to rank things at the top of the product backlog, like they'll say like, oh, the first top 15 stories are now prioritized. The first 10 stories are now like refined and maybe want to add labels to, sometimes people do that. So they'll add labels in those stories and put or refine on it, that's still fine. Depend on what your, your team wanna use. But the first and foremost is, uh, you know the availability of the people that will be working. Uh, you discuss any planned PTO, vacation, and also they'll start discussing what to be built, right? The next thing then we wanna ask is the product owner, like, okay, what stories are we gonna be refining? Because for the most part, the product owner is gonna be the one knowing this. And let me tell you guys one trick that I've done that actually works for me always is uh, we, where me, the PO, and the tech lead will connect prior to backward refinements and 
basically go to the product backlog and look at what story can we narrow down, right? So the product owner will go over all those stories, ensure that they, it's been written prior to backlog refinement. Sometimes too, you will have to rewrite or readjust some of those in the backlog refinement. That's fine. But at least get things started prior to the backlog refinement because then that will help you not go into this meeting and just refine one story for one hour. Or because then you are writing it, you are creating the whole what and why, writing acceptance criteria. All of that takes time, you know, actually for a lot of people in the meeting. But most of the time when we are very successful in backlog refinement is when we are able to do some of these things offline where the whole team are not in presence, right? So then when we come to this meeting, then we are going from either at the top of the backlog since we already prioritized or we already have a space where we're just going to go from there and, and go over the stories. So then the product owner will always will start with the goal, like, okay, for our next sprint, the stakeholder were asking for this, they were asking for that, they were asking for this. They might even tell you everything the stakeholder wants, right? And then what's your role as a scrum master in that? So next thing, your role is to ask, oh, by the way, you mentioned all of this, but this sounds like a lot. Look at our average velocity and our capacity, and we have so so and so people out, these people will be gone, or uh, so and so. Uh, are you all confident this is something that we can complete within the sprint? And then you might sometimes find yourself going back and forth with the PO. The PO will be like, oh, yes, maybe we might not have everything, but we have to squeeze things in. <laughs> Our PO will say that in the past. They're like, oh, but we might have to do this, we might have to do that. Oh, yes, I understand. All of this is priority. Then the next thing you should ask the PO is that among all of this list you've given, right, which one must we do first? very important, right? So sometimes people ask what's the role of a scrum master in backlog refinement. It's not that you are the one, sometimes you're not even the one driving it, but the questions that you'll be asking can help bring teams to reality. Also help the PO to better prioritize all of these issues they are getting from the stakeholders, right? So ask them, which one is the most important that we can do? They gave you the Moscow technique, must have, should have, could have, and wouldn't have. And that's when you use that Moscow technique the best is doing backlog refinement, right? And then the PO hopefully will not tell you, okay, these three are, no, no, no. Among these three, if we must do one, which one will it be? You know, you further get them to narrow down the priority. Because to be honest, if you are able to get your PO to do that, to rank order by priority, it helps everyone to know, okay, this one we know that it's the most important, and we should focus on this in this sprint. And of course, if we have bandwidth or we have anything remaining, we can always pull those in to the sprint as the sprint is going. And let's say you're in this backward refinement, the PO will be like, oh, oh, these are the three that's most important. Then you go to sprint planning, and the PO will be like, oh, no, by the way, I went back to the stakeholder. That changed now. These are not the ones that's important. It's going to be this one. And sometimes the team will be discouraged, right? But like, okay, what what are the what are the differences that made from last week till now? Um, what value did they see in this new one that they're gonna be adding now over the other? So by asking them all of this, they will not hopefully tell you. So the reason why you're asking all these extra questions is that to get the PO at least to stick to one plan, right? Because sometimes it's difficult for them and it's not easy job for the POs either, right? So it's very important you question, you ask all of that, and then they be like, okay, that's fine, because now we're in sprint planning. As I start my sprint, if anything else is coming in, it's going to create a scope change, and we have to go over all of those two before we can add it to the sprint, if we even have the bandwidth for it. So asking all of these questions, you might find yourself doing that in the first 10, 15 minutes. And hopefully if the PO now narrow down those priority, how are able to narrow and group those stories for us to work next, and then let's say this is the product backlog and the PO have said that, oh, this, this next story is important. They start saying it, so we just pull them. All the stories are the next five priority stories. We now pull it and we now pull up and move it up. We just pull it and move it to the next sprint. We just pull it in. And they start saying, oh, all of these are important. Like, okay, these are the five things. Okay, looking at our average velocity, Everything where we stand right now, this is something we all, we all feel comfortable we can do. And let's say they all say, yes, that's it. They'll, then as the PO is agreeing, you sometimes see the PO even pulling it up there. Or sometimes if they're not pulling it to an empty space, if you don't have any, 
you'll put it on the top of the back, which is still fine. Either or that works for the team or the PO that one of that's facilitating the meeting that wanna do, that's fine. So let's say that that's first thing. Narrow down your priority, look at the availability, look at everything and do that. And when that's done, so the next thing is to discuss the goal, right? What's the goal for this sprint or what's the goal for the next sprint or what are we trying to accomplish? You know, And then the PO2 will tell you that you guys can maybe adjust and even add your goal if that's possible. Or maybe sometimes you can write this down. So people sometimes write it and put it on Confluence. That's still fine. So the next thing I like is for you now to go over each one of the stories, right? Uh, we have to say, for example, this is one of the stories that they want to work on. And it's to go over all of the stories. And as the product owner is going over the stories, you, the Scrum Master, you are looking at the stories to ensuring that the story has a description, that's acceptance criteria, the priority is right, um, and it has some kind of epic if it's linked to anything. Because this one, is, this one, of course, you can see the story. There's a lot of things that's missing on these tags, right? So that's fine. Sometimes that's tags, there's no much issue. So you notice all of that, then you're like, oh, okay, that's the case. Then you go to the, um, you go to the next story, um, and you look at it, you'll be like, okay, does this have a story description? Yes, as a description has an acceptance criteria, that's good. And I see it's being prioritized as medium, that's the priority. And in this case, it's already been estimated. So even sometimes you see a story that's already been estimated and the sprint have not started yet, you still should ask the team to estimate, right? To ask the team to estimate like if that's something that's gonna stay or it's gonna change. If it's gonna remain, uh, that's fine. But even in sprint planning, we still have to follow up and change. And some of you will ask me the question like, oh, Aisha, do we estimate during backlog refinement? That's up to your team, right? If you have more time or your team are going over each stories and do the estimate as they go, there's nothing wrong with that. And let's say to you, sometimes your team will estimate in backlog refinement and they'll go offline and do their research or learn more, look at the acceptance criteria. They already go and do their dig dive. And they come back in sprint planning. They're like, oh, we thought during backlog refinement that story would have been a five. But to be honest, after doing my deep dive, looking at everything, that story is going to be an eight. And if even one person questioned the estimate, guess what? You should go back to agile poker or planning poker, right? And get your team to re-estimate. Uh, sometimes I know some people, they don't estimate at all. They just leave everything for sprint planning. Either or, it's fine. Anything your team decides to do, there's nothing wrong with that, right? So you go over each story, ensure that the description is clear, acceptance criteria. Sometimes too, some of this description might not be clear, right? And that's okay, because why? This is backward refinement. And sometimes the PO will readjust the description, will readjust the title, will readjust a lot of things in this uh, stories that's already been created based on the feedback they're getting from the developers. And as they are getting all of that, it's okay for them to adjust and readjust their thing until we start our sprint, right? And if the PO sometimes will realize that, oh my God, I don't have everything I need. Oh, they'll start taking notes down. Like, okay, I have to go back to the stakeholder on this one because you all brought up a very good question, right? Or some of these questions you guys are asking, I don't have an answer to, so I have to go back to the stakeholders verify with them, clear things with them, and I will come back to you all. And if that's the case too, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Nothing wrong with that. But it's very important for you all to know that backlog refinement is a working session. Sometimes don't go in there assuming that the PO should know everything, right? Or the developer should know everything. Sometimes some of these things are learned in backlog refinement. And then you further adjust when you go to sprint planning. Sometimes too, you do one back of refinement and the people like, oh, we must meet again tomorrow because this is important things. I have to go back and sync up with stakeholders and I have to come back with you all tomorrow. What time works for you all? And the team sometimes can compromise. They're like, oh, maybe we can do that in the parking lot. We can follow up in the parking lot. That's still fine, right? But don't come in here having high expectation that everything should be so perfect and ready to go like sometimes we have in sprint planning, right? So that's very important. And we Scrum Master, at all times, we should be questioning the work, looking at the story, brings up some question, as we we'll see. Um, if you notice the stories are big, this is another very important thing. If you notice the stories are big, this is also one time to call it out, right? You call it out. Oh, looking at this acceptance criteria, I've seen multiple steps described on this one story. And uh, this looks like a huge story. What do you all think? 
right? Get them to further explain, right? Don't just, uh, even though sometimes you might not even estimate yet, but do looking at the acceptance criteria or the full de detailed description of what they want, right? If you look at the whole what and why, but if you focus on the what they want and the acceptance criteria, those two things sometimes can give you a clue that this particular story is big, even if you are not technical. You can actually still help a team uh, be very effective in writing their stories, uh, ensure the stories are small, right? Meaning the invest criteria, so you can help them better prep for the sprint planning. Because if all of these stories are so big, uh, it will be difficult for it to be finished within the sprint. And sometimes we have to repeat this multiple times in the meeting, repeat it after multiple times, repeat it all over again, you know, just for the team to understand. And sometimes uh, you also see a backward refinement whereby the stakeholders will even they will join, right? I once had this, uh, I once worked for a company whereby we were building this new application. We used to have some of our end users attend our backlog refinements. And it would be so fun because it's like some kind of working session. Uh, what they would, what the PO usually used to do, you, you would send out the stories they plan to refine ahead of time. So everyone would take a look at the story, take a look at the description. And when we come to that session in our backlog refinement, the stakeholder sometimes would, it will help us readjust our acceptance criteria. It's like they will help us to readjust the wants. What do they want, right? And they used to be so engaged in this because then they will talk about it. And there's always a nice place for us to follow up with them in the sprint review, right? Oh, we were envisioning this, but it's nice to see it this way in sprint review. So if you have a stakeholder that want to attend backward refinement that you know that's going to add value to the session, do not discourage it and do not stop it. Uh, always encourage if people that's going to add any value to this meeting that want to attend Always let them attend. There's nothing wrong with that. But just let them to know that this is a working session. We don't have everything in. And we're going to come in and have conversation, collaborate as a team, and implement it. So don't go to that backlog refinement session and taking two hours just to refine one story. I've seen this too in the past, right? Where they will take almost two hours to refine one story. If that's the case, the team will be so discouraged and be so demotivated that they don't even want to attend those meetings. And we don't want that, you know? And time box the meeting and try to do your much as do your best as possible to respect the time box. And if you know that you are coming close to your time, always announce that you can reschedule so you guys can follow up from that if you see the need. But if there's no need, you can definitely finish up in backlog uh, in sprint planning. So the question I sometimes get from people is that, oh, Aisha, uh, I work in safe environments and we've already broken down all of our stories in um for up to five sprints already right now, we're in sprint one or sprint two. We already uh, did most of this thing during PI planning. Do you still think for us to do, do you think it's still important for us to do a backlog refinement? Yes. Important, yes. It's still very important for your team to do backlog refinement because to be honest, you can use this session to look at the, that story. Let's say we are in sprint 27 and we've already planned for sprint 28 in PI planning. And that was like almost a month ago, right? Or two months ago sometimes. And now that we are approaching Sprint 28, it's like a week from now or two weeks from now, we should still go over everything that's already been split and added in this just to ensure that it also aligns with the stakeholders' wants, also aligns with our future, aligns with our PI objectives and everything. Because sometimes, too, you have spillover from the sprints, and that sometimes can affect the whole plan you have for 28. Not because if you have spillover in Sprint 27, you automatically will move everything in sprint 28 and work on all of that. Don't overwork the team just because they have the spillover. You may have to reprioritize and renegotiate with the PO to ensure that you, you plan accordingly based on the current state of the team. That's why it's important to still have your backlog refinement, even if your sprint planning is over, or even if all of, I mean, if you did a PI planning, it's still very important for you to do all of this. If you find my content valuable, like and subscribe to this channel. I really will appreciate it. And if you're interested in mentorship, do not hesitate to email me at admin at aishascrumtech.com. And if your PO find it as is valuable and you can uh, adjust and readjust and renegotiate, that's good. Another key factor that can help you ensure that you are ready for sprint planning is also to have your definition of ready, right? 
look at the definition of ready and ensure that things that you have in there also aligns with what you're currently doing in your back of your finance. And if you notice things have changed or maybe your projects change or your future change or anything, you can also readjust to make sure it reflects with the current state of working and get the team to always to ensure that the stories are small. And sometimes you can ask my question, like, oh, are you all confident this can be completed within a sprint? Because this looks like a huge story looking at the acceptance criteria, you know. By going over all of this session with the team, you will now prioritize it, right? And then when you go to sprint planning, you just continue from where you left off, you know? And don't forget to look at the availability. I hope this uh, session on how to facilitate um, backlog refinement and how we can do backlog refinement as a team has been valuable to you all. If so, like and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate you all for watching. Thank you all for watching. See you all again in my next video.